feel about that. That's actually the official song for One Britain, One Nation Day this Friday. The government is encouraging schools to celebrate the day when children can learn about shared values of tolerance, kindness, pride and respect. Uh, the song was written and sung by children at St John's Primary School in Bradford. Well, I, you know, fair enough. If it's put on by the children, I have to I mean, beautifully it. sung, kids, by well the way. Done, I mean, well done. Well done, but... Um, it was you quite shocked, really. No, I'm not... I'm not I, don't, I don't want my children singing... You don't uh, think so? No. I don't mind them singing a wonderful patriotic song that talks about everyone being together and united. It's, I mean, it's, it's a song. I mean, it's actually better than the Eurovision song that we have. <laughs> do, you remember? do you remember that? Yeah, but our children should know that anyway. They do know that anyway. Why would they not know that? Well, I, I, don't, think there's a, I don't think there's any harm in it, though. Uh, you know, um, so, some people might say it's, you know, you know some sort of... Patriotism it's a bit or... too much. It's, it's think... a little bit too much Why? for me. I, I get What's wrong the patriotism. With that? It's uh... uniting people in music in a song, and it was written by those lovely children. No, I've, listen, I've beautiful song. As I said, I'm just, I'm just the jury's out. Maybe listen. I hadn't, I hadn't heard it before now mm. uh, because we waited till we came on air. I'm just not sure. I'm just not you, sure. What about I, the concept bit, of it, or I'm or not just sure the if whole... the concept's quite right. Do you think? Actually, I, I don't know whether it is a bit propaganda-like. Oh, um, I, think... I, I get the unifying factor, and it's a good time to be unified, obviously. Um, but um, I'm not sure about it. I mean, let us know your thoughts. I, I'm undecided at the moment do you think as to what, idea... I, what I feel. Do you think the idea of a song like that is propaganda or something uh, sinister? I think it's quite comforting that the children can all sing a song. You know, it's almost like a national anthem, except it's not about the Queen. So we all know the Queen. I know the first bits of the God Save Our Gracious Queen. I know yeah. that bit. I don't know the rest of it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I know parts of it. But this is something that is a bit more bringing it up to date a bit. It does feel yeah. a bit more like that. Yeah. And reminding people, actually, because my daughter didn't realise... Well, I, I say my daughter. I'm doing it under mm. the guise of myself. But the truth is that my daughter didn't really realise that England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland were actually separate oh, really? nations all joined under yeah. one. Yeah. So when Scotland were, you know, talking about leaving, my daughter was like, but I thought we were all the same. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, this is yeah. an educational... Um, song that reminds the kids that actually we're separate nations but we're one mm, nation at the mm. same time. I don't think it's a bad thing. I think I, it's quite a nice. beautiful song. I'm just not sure about the concept of it. But you're, you're um, going to feel bad. In I a need minute. some time. You know what I'm like. You... The cogs will slowly get round. <laughs> yeah. When you see um, the faces, if we've got a video of those little children, that'll swing it for you. Uh, listen, don't. I, you, know, you know what I'm like, of course. And, and their little voices, beautiful. But I'm talking about the actual idea of it yeah. and, and making children sing that in a school. As a as sort of, to me, it's a little bit regimental. Do you think it's a bit regimented? It's, yeah, it's yeah, unifying it is. people. Music is is unity. What do you, Music it, is it, it is unifying, but I, we want to hear from you guys at home because I can't quite work it out and, and what I feel actually. Should we look at the newspapers? Yes, I think either. we should. Uh, right, let's have a look. We're going to start. Let's, well, we've got to have a look at today's front pages. Uh, take countries. Look. I know Ghana uh, lined up is... initially to do a deal. Uh, so it, it sort of opens things out. And uh, I think sometimes we have a bit of a my myopic view mm. of what, uh, who we should be trading with when actually there's a world out there. So I think it's, it's, it's quite a good... In some ways, the fact that we can step out and get those yes. other deals with other nations that we haven't worked with in this way. Exactly. And, yeah, like and, and know... And the limits have changed as well, so that's mm. good. Mm. Lots of people getting in touch with uh, all sorts of topics that we're discussing. Freedom Day, mm. Brexit, five years, uh, what Boris Johnson's saying. Um, Mark saying here, I will totally get back to normal and feel most have been doing that for months. Mm. Ooh, who have you been hanging out with? Yeah. Uh, but actually, you're right. I mean, uh, we have all been... I, I think it's it, you, you kind of work, learn to live in that kind of semi semi sort of with the mask on and protected mm. but then you you are living your life as well it's going to be very interesting to go fully oh i don't need to get my mask out that kind of like or, oh um, i forgot my mask or, or my yes. god my breath is bad you know <laughs> you've not had that I, I've, now, nowadays though because i think i've changed my no. toothpaste or whatever it was but at the beginning i was like i was actually shocked i was like oh my god you know nobody's told me about this before <gasps> well they're talking about skin as well like, I, and i've know, got spots all around my face mask and everything acne. yeah or, Whatever That's exactly it is. So what happened to we me. We can say goodbye to all of this, mm. which is going to be great. I don't it? think they're a bad thing on public transport, though. Still, because mm. of it, just yeah. going forward. Never mind COVID, but other, yeah. other sort of yeah. uh, infections or, or yeah. bugs, shall well, we say. Well, there was the report that flu actually, had been it's a really down good quite, point. quite, you know. It's a really good point, yeah. isn't it? Uh, that actually, you, you know, some people will feel, never mind COVID, that mm. it might be nicer if you're in close proximity with people. Yeah, get wear your mask, a mask out. Wear a mask. I was quite glad when people were wearing masks. 
especially on public transport when it was you know how yeah. we were in such a close situation yeah. If you've ever travelled, especially in particular in London, obviously you'll have networks across the UK, but in London, in the tubes, people were literally squeezing next to each other, you know, and people just, you just turn your head away from somebody else's head. I mean, that, I don't think we'll come back to that ever mm. again, which I think is a good thing. Just a quick one, this uh, from Michelle, I want your view on this. Mm. Uh, uh, our government has intentionally bankrupted hard-working, healthy people. I think sometimes people might say that if they've never had a relative involved or you know or who's had COVID badly because I think a lot of people if you suffered with serious somebody suffered seriously with COVID I think you, you'd probably say a different yeah, thing. Yeah I, I mean I think the thing is is it lie after lie or is it that, that actually um, you know the government at times for me I felt mm. have, confu have been confused themselves mm. and not done what what they didn't they didn't really know how to handle this is that the right way of looking at I it? I would say it is they didn't know but who knew who knew how to handle it if you look at the governments <coughs> excuse me around the world they all made mistakes even New Zealand who then changed their strategy well, when yeah. they realized they thought we'll do it differently uh, but it's been a mess from a lot of the leaders I mean mm -hmm. you know you can't simply uh, blame this government now George says that uh, his mask will be off I mean, I got used to it yeah, well very good <laughs> coming up you can do it then five years ago today the UK voted to lead the European Union and a lot has happened since June the 23rd 2016. We'll find out why a range of laundry at Marks and Spencers is causing controversy after this. To use the freedoms that breakfast, bre breakfast, mm. I'm, breakfast I, I should, as well. I'm thinking of food yeah. that Brexit <laughs> gave to deliver a That's better future. <laughs> that food, food, food. I love food uh, for the British people. Today marks five years since the country voted to lead the European Union. But what does that mean to all of us? Do you feel like you've got a better future? I mean, Kirsty, can you believe it's been five years? It does feel like such a, such a, a couple of years yeah, ago. Does, but then it? we've had this whole pandemic in mm. between. I think that's the whole point, isn't it? There's mm. been this whole sort of horrendous period in between of, of nearly, well, over 18 months, isn't it now, mm. or whatever. Um, I can't believe it's five years, no. Mm. Uh, but, um, and it, but as you said earlier, it's, it, I mean, I will, I'm not pro-Brexit. Mm. Um, you, you are, aren't you? Well, I thought it was, a, I, I, I mean, I, I can't bear being, I can't bear being bullied. And to me, it felt like the, the you know, the European, European Union were, were, were yeah, bullying. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, you, you saw what happened with the whole vaccine situation where they hadn't ordered the vaccines, we ordered them, and the only reason why they could stop the vaccines at the border yeah. was simply because we'd ordered them, because if we hadn't ordered them, they wouldn't exist and they wouldn't be able to do that. Mm. Uh, and I think that sort of thing, especially with the, 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 the whole uh, Northern Ireland situation as well, they, they, they to me, they, they seem quite bullish, and I don't really particularly like that. And it's, it, it, I like the fact that you can do what you want to do without having to go through a rigmarole. And the other side of it is that there were 27 or 28 nations or whatever joining part of the European Union. You, have you ever tried to get five of your mates to agree something? Imagine having yeah, 27 so other nat nations with their own vested interests well, no, try and get them right. all to agree. I mean, what, what are you going to come out with? It's not going to work. I think it worked when it was a smaller construct when there were only, say, nine countries at the beginning. That's how it started. But as, as it's got bigger, the, the whole thing yeah. has become slower it's a monolith it's yep. slow you saw the way they did the um the vaccination pro, mm, pro mm. the whole thing it was very slow they've sped up now they're catching up in fact they might have slightly overtaken us but but it was interesting to mm. see oh i get that I, yeah. I get that and i can see the positives in many ways completely um mm. and it is taking control back isn't it it's being able to control um as you said, I like that analogy of five of your mates. You can't even control five of your exactly. mates. I'm 28. Mind you, be careful what you wish for. It depends who's holding, holding the, the, the steering wheel and in control once you've pushed it to them. So we'll see how yeah. this government shape up. Yeah. Well, let's have a look at what else is going on today in the news. The Scottish government will not be allowed to hold a second independence referendum before 2024. That's according to Cabinet Minister Michael Gove. In an interview with the Daily Telegraph, Gove, who's overseeing Boris Johnson's attempts to keep Scotland in the Union, said that it would be at best reckless, at worst folly, he said, to hold a second referendum with the UK uh, was recovering from the pandemic. Immigration enforcement officials will begin giving EU citizens who live in the UK a 28-day warning to apply to remain. But the Home Office will give people indefinite time to complete an application for settled status if they have a reasonable excuse for delay. There's a week to go until the deadline for applications and some 5.6 million European Economic Area citizens and their dependents have applied for settled status. But there are around about 400,000 cases outstanding and the government's helpline is receiving thousands of calls a day. Today also happens to be five years since the UK voted to leave the European Union. 
Festivals and freelancers in the cultural sector face devastating consequences unless the government offers more support. That's according to the Public Accounts Committee. MPs also raise concerns over the lack of support for crew and technicians. The government said more help was coming, though, via its Culture Recovery Fund. Now, services like Netflix, Amazon Prime and Disney Plus could face tighter regulation in the UK under government proposals. This is to bring them in line with Ofcom's code covering issues like harm, offence, accuracy and impartiality. Meanwhile, ministers have also confirmed a consultation into whether the, to privatise Channel 4. The broadcaster is currently funded by adverts, but it is publicly owned. And Scotland are out of the European Championships after losing 3-1 to Croatia. England won the group after beating Czech Republic 1-0. They'll now go on to face either France, Portugal or Germany. Mean people. Now, coming <laughs> up, where is the weirdest place that you've had a meeting? We'll tell you where one council decided to meet up. And we'll look at the world's uh, most mispronounced words some of them will actually irritate this is you. great what i've got there is it's sort of in a, my sort of top top bedroom because i've got three floors in my house the very top and you can see the alcoves the bed and everything and I've, i it's so difficult you want a better setting it needs to look mm. good but that's the best place to do the meeting mm. and have the mm. yeah it's just not like the you know you want to interact with people it's time mm. that we, we we did all that again bye bye mm. zoom with the masks that's mm. what i say but we have found some things that we can do that are actually easier to do via zoom as well things that we were doing oh yeah of course i mean like that's that. A positive, isn't it? Mm, mm, mm. Uh, so we look at uh, Marks and Spencers actually. Uh, now, yeah, I like uh, as I was walking past Marks and Spencers yes. the other day, I saw, I thought, oh, hang on, they've got different sort of colours of lingerie, which you'd think is pretty obvious, but they've launched a more inclusive range with five new nude shades and to cater for more skin tones. Uh, they say I the news campaign great. has been, yeah, I think it's excellent, has been partly inspired by the global conversation following the death of George Floyd. But why has it taken a murder like mm. that for them to come up with that solution? I mean, for me personally, I go in and I try to buy it and they say, these are nude or bare tights. And I look at them, I say, no, they're not. They're tan. They're tan. Mm. They're not nude they're not bare because if I put tan tights on it looks like I've sort of got a slight shimmer of sort of lightness yeah, and whiteness yeah. on my legs so I don't know why they hadn't thought of that sooner well I so think that's the point I think it's great I think it's about time you know in this modern world that all shades of skin are, are catered for surely mm. uh, but why has it taken uh, something like the George Floyd um, tragedy for for this to spark um, something like this. Do you know what it is? And I think it, it boils down to um, money. Because what's happening now is mm. obviously there are now more people of colour, more black people in this country, and obviously we're sort of infiltrating other areas where it was majority, a huge majority, uh, mostly uh, of a white population. And now they realise, hang on a minute, there's a market in it, there's money in it, let's be the first to do it. And I, yeah, but we're, we're but talking about think... lighter shades as well. I mean, it's not, not just black skin. Well, that's it? why I say people, people mm. of colour. That's why I'm saying people who are of colour as well. So you're talking dark, but we're also talking all the shades in between but what I don't have a term for that all mm. the different shades mm. in between mm. I could do that but that's why I say people of color because colors all sorts of colors um, but yes I think that really it's more a commercial thing but that's not a bad thing but this is a good opportunity to just kind of capitalize on that opportunity I suspect yeah. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I'll tell you what, is there anything more annoying than either saying or hearing words that are mispronounced? Personally, yeah, I've got a bit of a bugbear about it. According to a new survey by Insights agency Perspectus Global, 61% find it annoying when other words are said incorrectly. 65% are too embarrassed to correct them. So what are the most common uh, mispronounced words here in the UK? Well, specifically, probably. Probably, specifically. Pro probably. People sort of probably forget the second B. Yeah. Um, specific and Pacific. They're difficult to, words to say, though. Pacifically, specifically. Yeah, but Pacific. You've got to really get your sort of tongue around yeah, all the letters. I, guess, I can understand I why people just go, probably. Uh, <laughs> other it. words, I'll tell you one that is quite annoying is espresso, you know, like a little coffee. Espresso. It's is not it, espresso, it's espresso. Is it espresso? It's not espresso. What about pizza and pizza? What is it? Pizza, pizza. or pizza? Yeah. Pizza. But is that. Is it pizza? Pizza. Yeah, pizza, Z. Is it? Um, but yeah. Are, are there any words that rile you, though, at home? Let us know. We'll discuss that a little bit later on. GBviews at gbnews.uk yeah. or at gbnews uh, on Twitter say, as well. I used to say, I used to say, tiss you. Tiss you, that's nice. Tiss you, that's tiss not you. mispronounced. No, no, it's that's a dialect tiss you, tiss thing, you. isn't it? Is it really a dialect thing? Well, it's more, more a, yeah, a way of saying a word. I mean, you, you can't, think... that's a dialect thing. No, it's not. Tissue. No, tiss you or tissue. 
But then you can get into ba oh, bath said, and bath, couldn't you? No, it is you. I, I just thought that's how you said it. I didn't think that I'd mispronounced <laughs> it at all. No. I've been going around like that for years. Have you? Also, spaghetti bolognese. Is it spaghetti bolognese? Or spaghetti bolognese? Bolognese. bolognese, isn't it? Is that what it is? I don't know. Each to their own. But let us know if things, uh, if, there, if there are words that annoy you. Yes, get uh, in And touch. we will read them get in out. Touch. Get in touch at GB <laughs> News. We'd love to hear your views. So good morning. It's Wednesday, the 23rd of June. These are the stories that matter to you and to us on the Great British Breakfast. The travel industry leaders have hit out to the government for looking away during its darkest hour. Later today, organisations throughout tourism and aviation will join a travel day of action to call for the safe reopening of travel. They're hoping to highlight the impact of COVID restrictions as well as appeal for more financial help. Also, some great British news. England's on track to lift all remaining lockdown restrictions, including social distancing, uh, face masks and work from home guidance on July the 19th. According to the Times, ministers want to get as close to normal as possible, which is obviously great news. And emphasis will be on personal responsibility rather than laws and regulations. It was a night of mixed emotions for football fans across the UK. England won their Euro 2020 group after beating Czech Republic 1-0. But Scotland are out of the championships after losing 